Hey guys, Laura here from What Laura Likes. So today we are talking about how important it is to have spiritual reading in your lives every single day. And so if you are not reading the saints, taking 10, 15, ideally 30 minutes or an hour, a day to really soak in the lives of the saints and the words of the saints, then this video hopefully will inspire you to change that for the better because since we are called to be saints, we really need to pay attention to our brothers and sisters and their lives and their words because they fill our souls with light so that we can go out and be the light of the world. All right, guys, so today's video is inspired by the very lovely book, Councils of Perfection for Christian Mothers. I'm going to be reviewing this book in full this summer, but suffice to say, this book is an amazing resource for Catholic mothers in particular, even though there are some great tidbits in here for anybody. Um, it was written in 1913 by Monsignor Lejeune for Christian mothers, for Catholic mothers, and it's a really beautiful read. It really does help you grow closer to Christ, um, grow in your faith, get out of any kind of lukewarmness and into a fervor for God and His church and eternity. And so within this book, there is a section regarding spiritual reading. Now, I had done a video a few months ago about, you know, kind of a spiritual reading haul, and I'll link that down below as well as up, up above. And in that video, I just shared some books I had gotten but this book in particular talks about how spiritual reading really needs to be the books written by the saints or like the gospels or the imitation of Christ. Those kinds of books, they don't teach your intellect as much as they teach your heart and they cause you to meditate and to pray and to repent and go to confession sometimes, which is all really good things. So I have some quotes for you I want to talk through from the Councils of Perfection for Christian Mothers, and, um, and then we'll just talk about it from there. So the first quote is on page 89. All reading which enlightens the mind and determines the will to do good is spiritual reading. So when you think about the books and that you listen to or the books that you spend time on, you want books that point you towards God, towards eternity, towards virtue. The second quote on the same page, 89, says spiritual reading is primarily an instrument of perfection and holiness. So when you're picking out your spiritual reading books, you really want to think about, is this something that is enlightening my mind and determining my will to do good. He gives examples of books of piety, the lives of the saints, and biographies. So, and then he quotes St. Francis de Sales, who is one of, I don't have his book in here, but I'm in the, like near the end of Introduction to the Devout Life. That book, I've done a couple of videos regarding motherhood and what St. Francis de Sales says. That's another book that I'm, that I'm going to be featuring in depth in my 2022 summer season. So, Keep your eyes out for that this summer. Um, but St. Francis says to Madame Brulart, I wish you would not permit a day to pass without giving an hour or a half hour to the reading of some spiritual book. And then in Intro to the Devout Life, he says, Have always before you some good and pious book and read a little of it every each day with devotion, as if you were reading letters which the saints had sent you from heaven to show you the way and encourage you to follow it. And so... I think that's one of the reasons why I personally really make a priority to read spiritual reading every morning. I get up early before my family, even if I have to give up five, in order to sit down with the Lord and to open a book and let him speak through that book to me, helping guide my day, helping me be a bit holier than I was the day before, a bit more refined, a bit more aware of of his will for me. So Monsignor Lejeune has some tips about before reading. Before opening a book, it is well to ask God in a short prayer to grant that your reading may be, may be profitable both to the mind and to the heart. Lord, open my mind to thy, to thy word. Grant that I may understand it, relish it, and put it into practice. I wanted to share a short story about how this actually worked out for me in particular, so in the traditional calendar, on the traditional calendar, the daily readings repeat themselves sometimes two or three times during the week, depending on whose feast day it is. 
And and so I had read the same scripture twice that week, and I was just like, yeah, yeah, I know this story, I know this story. But I tried doing what Monsignor Lejeune suggests, and I and I decided to pray to the Holy Spirit to open my heart and my eyes to what God is trying to tell me this day in this reading. And within moments of looking at the same words I had read multiple times that week, something jumped out from my, from the page into my heart, and I ended up pulling up my journal and spending I don't know, 20 minutes talking to God about that one line of scripture that I had read so many times, but because I had not read it in the light of the Holy Spirit, it hadn't impacted my life. And scripture is meant to impact our lives and it's the living word of God. So it's different every day that you read it, depending on what you need and what like what you need to hear and what God wants you to hear. Monsignor Lejeune goes on to say on page 102, If you have reaped no benefit from your reading, it is due to the fact that you have read without light from above. And I've done this. I've read, um, you know, spiritual readings that should have impacted me in a beautiful way, but I just read them. You can't read them like a novel. And he's going to explain that in a minute. And so if you just read without any kind of light and without the willingness to stop and hear and meditate, then, um, cause the idea is not just to get through the words and to get through the book. The whole point is if you only read, I've never finished imitation of Christ because that book, I can only read one or two lines before I am smacked in the face by God. And I have to stop and pray and ponder and think through things and meditate and reflect and perhaps, you know, say an act of contrition. It just, <laughs> it's, it's so rich. And you know, the gospels can be like that as well. So He says that a spiritual book cannot be read like a novel. It requires serious meditation since it is not a mere amusement of the mind. And I really do suggest having a journal that you use if you write, if you in any way enjoy writing your thoughts down. It's such a nice way to communicate with God and to just even get your own feelings out. Like, okay, I read this passage and now I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, feeling feelings of guilt or I'm uncomfortable in some way, or I, it relates to yesterday's event that happened. And you just, just writing that down can really be beneficial to your soul to get it out of your, out of your head and out of your heart and onto paper. So what books does Monsignor Lejeune suggest? He definitely suggests the gospels. He says on page 107, you should never permit a day to pass without reading at least a page of it. And as for homeschoolers or just anyone who's a Catholic mother, what a beautiful gift to give to your children would be the practice of reading a page of the gospel, either together or if they're old enough, assigning it as part of their homeschool or their morning prayer time to say, I need you to sit down with your Bible. Every child should have a Bible and I want you to read a page of it. And maybe not even if they're older, you know, say middle school, high school age, not only do I want you to take time to read a page, but I want you to do a Lectio Divina about it, or I want you to do, um, to at least journal about, you know, choose one verse from scripture and make it be your, your, um, as St. Francis de Sales says, like your nosegay for the day, your, your bouquet for the day that you carry with you and you ponder and you think about and maybe write a few lines. Older children could do this even before they go off to school if you don't homeschool and you can do it before you go to work or start your day. Uh, let's see here. And then he talks about reading the life of some saint. Now I wanted to pause here and talk about what Ryan does with the kids, because I think this is such a beautiful practice and he's actually going to be putting a video up like from father to father about reading to your kids, um, in the evenings, reading them something spiritual. And so we have these different book collections. We have these vision books from Ignatius Press. And then we also have um, the 20 like box kit of the Windyat books um, by Tan. And um, so these are all the same author and these are have different authors, but he picks a saint and they read about one chapter in, in the evening before we do our family rosary. It gives me a chance to kind of get things done, you know, before we kind of settle down together. But for him, it's, not only teaching the children, but it's teaching himself the lives of the saints and it's impacted him spiritually. So it's this beautiful practice that is enriching the children's lives, but also enriching his own life. And I find that when I homeschool and I teach our faith, the same thing happens for me. And so don't ever neglect reading 
a saint book to your children because the impact that it can have on you could be even more so, you know, could be such a strong um, call to virtue. And because their their lives are so good, they're such beautiful models of not just, you know, all roses and sunshine and butterflies, but there's a lot of suffering and strife and trial and, and living out our faith, you know, properly toward, towards God. Um, in those books. And then um, he talks about The Imitation of Christ as well as some other books. He's a French Monsignor, so he has a lot of French um, book options in there for you. So for me, I just grabbed a bunch of books off the shelf. Most of my spiritual reading is on my Kindle. I have a lot of St. Alphonse de Liguori. Most of his works is like a dollar on Kindle, so I just have been collecting his works over time. A lot of the spiritual reading that we love in the Catholic tradition, um, is either free in the iPieta app if you don't mind reading on your phone, or um, you can get it for about a dollar on a Kindle if you like. I have a Kindle Paper White, which I really enjoy reading because there's less blue light um, and you can do it in like night mode and things. So I just grabbed a few books. So I thought I would just name them off really fast just to give you some ideas. Uh, spiritual Warfare and the Discernment of Spirits. This book I would count as spiritual reading, even though it's not about the saints. It, well, it takes the work of St. Ignatius of Loyola and walks through it. So it is in that way. It's just not his exact words. Um, Cardinal Seurat's The Power of Silence. This is one of those books that you read a few lines and you pause. <laughs> and it's just beautiful. Um, St. Louis de Montfort, Secret of the Rosary. I need to get a new copy. This one's super old. Got it at like a thrift store. But this book is amazing. I read some to the kids, and I think, especially if you do a family rosary, this would be a beautiful book to add to your homeschool to um, read aloud to your kids. Don't worry about the language being too hard for your children. They will rise to the occasion. Their souls are so sensitive that when we read from spiritual works to them, we need to trust that the Holy Spirit will enlighten them and give them the understanding. Roses Among Thorns. If you are stepping your way into the works of St. Francis de Sales, it's actually his feast day today that I'm filming this. So St. Francis de Sales, Ora Pro Nobis. Um, this little book, Roses Among Thorns, is a very, very beautiful book. And you could study this for quite a while. And like I said, they're very short little, this would be a great book for Lent. Um, they're just like little one or two page meditations. Humility of Heart. Humility of Heart. Father Ray Berger talks about this book a lot. This is going to help you be humble. I used to read this with the kids. I have not gotten very far at all. Again, I don't judge a book based on if I have finished or not, because when it comes to spiritual reading, it is about the message that your soul needs to receive in that moment. It is not about checking a box and saying, I finished the book. Um, you guys know, trust will sur sur surrender to divine providence. And I do love Father Jean-Baptiste saint Jour. I have a huge work of his um, that I'll talk about in another video later on. But I'm uh, St. John Vianney carried around St. Jean-Baptiste St. Uh, Father Jean-Baptiste saint Jour's work, like his big tomb that I, um, I think I only have volume two of it, but he carried around with him. And this is excerpts from that as well as St. Claude de la Colombière. So this is a powerhouse of a little book. Um, and it's just full of truth. And then I don't know if I've talked about this book in a while. This is The Imitation of Mary. It is written in the same way that The Imitation of Christ was. It's not written by Thomas A. Kempis, but it's written in the same spirit of it. And it's very, oh, if there's like a section on silence in here. It's just, it's a beautiful dialogue between the writer and Mary and it's just it's so good so I highly suggest this book if you want to grow closer to Mary or learn to imitate her virtue and again you can just open this to any section and start reading and it will impact your day in your life so I will have a list on Amazon with these spiritual readings and others Again, like I said, spiritual reading is something ideally that's written by a saint or a very holy soul. And it's not about apologetics and like catechesis. It's about enlightening your heart to God's goodness, God's love, God's mercy, and your own striving for virtue and rooting out vice in order to be that light. So let me know down below what you're reading right now for your spiritual reading. Also, let me know 
when you stick your spiritual reading into your day, do you have multiple times a day that you take a little break and settle down and and spend five or 10 minutes with God, or do you front load it? I do my spiritual reading in the morning, and then I have different spiritual reading that I do in the evening. Usually I'm reading St. Alphonsus de Liguori's Preparation for Death. With that, you guys, let's pray an Ave Maria that the Holy Spirit, asking Mother Mary to ask the Holy Spirit to guide us in a selection of a spiritual reading, not only for right now, but also as we get, look forward towards Lent. And I'm a of Fili at Spiritus Sancti, amen. Ave Maria, gratia plena, Dominus tecum, benedicta tu mulieribus et benedictus fructus ventris tui, Jesus. Sancta Maria, Mater Dei, ora pro nobis peccatoribus, nunc et in ora mortis nostrae. Amen. Mother Mary, Queen of Peace, pray for us. In nomine Patris et Filii, Spiritus Sancti. Amen. All right, guys, I hope you are having a very blessed winter and we're almost to Lent. It's so crazy. Lent starts March 2nd, so we're getting closer. So don't let it take you by surprise. Don't let Ash Wednesday take you by surprise. We will be there very soon. Um, enjoy these last few weeks. Maybe get your chocolate fix in or eat up some more dairy or however you practice it. Um, and as always, if you need to talk with me, you can email me or, or comment down below. And I hope you have a very blessed day. Continue to know God, love God, and do God's will. I'll talk to you real soon. Bye. Thanks, Christy. Mm -hmm.